what's up guys, this is Cabal here from Team Alias, here today to do another Command & Conquer 3 Kane's Wrath video commentary. And today I have a game on Tournament Tower, which is probably the least favorite map out, out of all the Kane's Wrath uh, maps in this game. And I guess these two players played on this map, or perhaps Cash just chose it and he wanted to wa watch the uh, these two players play on this map. So we have um, Green Zero playing as GDI. And get versus X Chronic, aka a Cyberstorm, playing as Reaper 17 on Tournament Tower. So this is Cyberstorm playing as Reaper, the Blue Reaper 17 in the top, and down on the bottom is Green Zero playing as his usual Green GDI faction. And this is Tournament Tower, which is, as I said before, the least uh, favorite map, probably the least played map out of all the Kings Wrath maps in this game. But I don't know why people hate it, but I like it. As it's, it's a nice map where there's just limited Tiberium. At your starting field, and then your expansion, you get attack up, to get attack up quickly to, to get to tier three or something, get juggernauts or, or some tor some type of artillery units, and then they will. And then we have the game right there. So Cybertron is going to go for three buzzers to capture his Tiberium spike, while Green Zero is going to go for uh, two Ruffin squads, and he does almost get that buzzer, but not quite. But the buzzer is going to enter that uh, gearspace structure, and this is going to elect Green Zero to capture his Tiberium spike with no problems whatsoever. But then the um, Cybertron is going to have a vision. Uh, the, around this place, and um, these uh, Reser squads, one Reser squad goes down to the uh, single Ruffman squad, so that's a good trade-off there. Both players have the refineries and slash uh, extractors down, and then Green Zero is going to bypass one of the uh, Buzzer squads and just send one to uh, x Chronic's base to see what is he's building. What it, he's building is a Rap Sphere, this probably is a refi another um, Harvester, would imagine being another, uh, would, would imagine being a Seeker Tank or a, or a Shredwalker, but yeah, it's building pretty slowly, so it's a harvester. Green Zero, meanwhile, has got his pitbull. Uh, I'm not sure if he should go for a pitbull. Well, perhaps he should, because just in case, just just in case that uh, uh, Cyberstorm maybe tra maybe he could be trapped at 59 and going for some fast legs or something. But I guess he just wants to be sure building a pitbull and just scouting it. Whoa, a little bit of a glitch there. Scouting it to Cyberstorm's base to see what type of action he is, and he notices that he is Reaper 17, so he's going to start firing on those shields just to um, get those shields off. And then, yeah, makes makes them less vulnerable for attacking. So the two shots from Pip Pip destroy is a shielded harvester, and I guess just uh, Green Zero is just going to focus on one uh, shielded harvester for now. And uh, X Chronic is going to expand to the uh, central platform while Green Green Zero just got his um, firing down and he's uh, not moving his MCV. Looks like he's just focused on destroying, trying to destroy this shielded harvester. But looks like he wants to do some damage to this um, <coughs> uh, drone ship just before it makes it to the um, platform. And that dealt a little damage, that dealt about about 80% damage, but not that much. And then uh, Cyberstorm is going to go for uh, an extractor and place him down right here at his expansion. Perhaps going to go for another uh, Harvester to get uh, 6 on the field, and it looks like this may be another uh, Shield Harvester, and it is. This Harvester is actually do down to pretty low health, it's going to be um, it's gonna be dead soon if uh, Cyberstorm doesn't do anything about it. And he is going to microwave around his um, Harvester. Finally the Shard Walker is out, so this is going to destroy that infantry, no problems. And it's going to chase that uh, pitbull back away. Green Zero, meanwhile, has got to tier two or eight. He's going for something else. Looks to me like it's uh, a tier three tech lab. So fast tech here from Green Zero, and with uh, five harvesters, keeping that keeping that um, uh, greens keeping um, Cyberstorm busy while he techs up in his base. I did see in the comments that uh, Cash said that Green Zero did go for a fast expand, did go for a fast tech up to tier three. And perhaps um, expand a little bit later, but um, I didn't see the game, so this is actually the first, first time seeing this game. So I d I'm going to see Green Zero expanding uh, probably after when he places his uh, tech lab or tech center, and he's going to go for predator tanks. And this is a good choice to um, see if he can maybe catch a couple of shoot harvesters and put and uh, destroy them and destroy them. But the single rip Shard Walker is going to be scouting to the ways the base, and uh, Cyberstorm doesn't know that Green Zero is at tier three right now, and maybe some we're seeing some mammoth tanks or. Remember tanks or juggernauts um, coming coming out of the war factory, but the predator tanks are just ha hold the center of the map right now. And a couple of uh, shard walkers are going to be coming into to scout uh, Green Zero's base, but uh, looks like Cyberstorm is just going to let, let, let this go to waste. And where's that shard walker? I think it just I don't think the shard walker made it down to the base anytime soon. But it looks like he's going to be juggernauts, and uh, juggernauts are going to be very very powerful against uh, GDF against uh, this turn fashion in this. Uh, Cyberstorm's at uh, tier two right now with the you know, with dev tanks and these. Will hold off those predator tanks, but they won't hold off the um, the uh, juggernaut, which is coming straight to coming straight towards the base. And Green Zero looks like he's going to go for um, a fast build here. It's going to bring his Conyer to the center of the field, and he's pl plopped down that um, Sonic field, which 
We'll give it a little bit more armor. Two dev techs now out for uh, Cyberstorm, and he looks like he's just going to try to keep hold this expansion as long as he possibly can, and hopefully tech up to something else. He's building something out of his drone platform. Looks like to me it's a technology symbol because he's building pretty slowly, and he also built down a plot down a portal just so he can get some uh, disintegrators out. But here comes a Sonic emitter, and this is going to be very deadly. Although the powers are right now, and um, those the fire tanks took a couple of good shots against that Sonic emitter before the power went out. So that's um, a little bit of bad power micro by Green Zero. He should have had um, a couple more. He only has two power plants. One of them is not powered up, so one of them is not ha doesn't have the uh, advanced uh, turbines. So that's why uh, those um, Devar tanks had a couple of very uh, rare shots against that Sonic emitter, which ended up destroying only one Devar tank, and not and not just all of them. So as Barrapai Macro on Green Zero, and it looks like he has a War, war Factory here. He sold the one in his expansion or is at his main base because he doesn't need it. And now that Green Zero is running out of Tiberium, his Tiberium field is depleted. He needs to plop down a refinery right right here so he can uh, get some more economy going but then three juggernauts four juggernauts now for green zero and these um devour tanks are absolutely, absolutely nothing on those um juggernauts especially since when the sonic emitter is just uh, standing right there guarding those juggernauts so uh cyberstorm is a little bit in trouble right now he's gonna have to deal something pretty quickly and he lost one of his extractors so that's not gonna be a good idea either and the drum platform is probably going to be placing on the technology side but relatively relatively soon, and these uh, devour tanks are being charged up. Those uh, juggernauts are firing at the harvesters, which should probably end up firing at the extractor, so then the um, harvesters can be long distance mining. And actually, uh, I did say right that the technology assembler was placed down a long time ago, and decided to go for um, a warp chasm or a hexapod uh, at the back of the base so Green Zero can't see it, but without the economy that his last um, extractor at his uh, second base was destroyed, he can't, uh, he has to do long-distance mining, but he did end up uh, face-filling two of his harvesters, and that's going to be good for um, for Gre for uh, Cyberstorm, so he can keep mining going and get that hexapod out as soon as possible, because Greens right now has six, five juggernauts, uh, and they're just terrorizing all these harvesters, so that's like one, two harvesters down, and maybe three, nope, not three, three, three the third one just escapes, and Greens are sitting in his pit bull that he just had at the beginning of the game, to scout out to see what else Cyberstorm has. The Cyberstorm is going to go for a hexapod, and there's no way in hell that uh, Green Zero can stop this unless it has an airfield somewhere. But look at this: three depth tanks sneak around the side of the map and going for the um, going for the tech labs. And this is going to catch Green Zero off guard unless he can place it on a Sonic emitter relatively quickly. He doesn't have anything queued, but this is going to be very deadly. Looks like um, Cyberstorm is opting to go for the uh, for the power plant first, and that'll put Green Zero on lower power. And um, now they're going to be attacking the tech center, but. Th uh, Cyberstorm to be careful with the Orca Strike! Oh, it takes down one of the Dev Tanks, and that's not good. But the, he does end up destroying the Tech Lab, so no more, t no more Tier 3 Juggernauts for Green Zero. He's going to have to deal with something else. Maybe he should probably go switch from Shattery Tanks or something. Possibly that, or get some Hammerheads on the field, which he doesn't have AP ammo yet. He's upgrading it now. And here comes the uh, Eradicate Exopod now. But uh, Cyberstorm is down to three Harvesters now. And he is going to get over the stasis chamber for whatever reason, maybe some shock trooper or something. But those that hexapod now is going to be going right towards the juggernauts, and Green Zero has them spread out, so then they can't uh, hexapod can't uh, squish the juggernauts because uh, they're not clumped up in one area. But um, the Sonic Sonic going to be doing some damage, and there's going to be uh, corruptors trying to heal the hexapod, but at the same time the juggernauts are destroying them quickly, and uh, this is going to be the hexapod is being actually the hexapod is going to be doing great damage now that it uh, has nothing else. No Sonic Emitters to be dealt damage with, so Green Zero is really in trouble now with this proxy. This proxy um, Conair placement, he does he does manage to place his Tech Lab, and this will help him place some another some more um, Sonic Emitters. And the Redigrade Hexapod is almost dead. Um, the Corruptor is still healing up the Hexapod, but uh, Green Zero is down to th just two Juggernauts, and a couple of them, both of them are going to dest be destroyed in a couple of seconds. One of them walking over, one of them walking over, and with just five Juggernauts, that Hardy Hexapod has already leveled up to um, veteran status. And uh, even um, the Green Zero trying to capture his uh, husks back, but the uh, Buzzer Support Power takes care of that and powers down the barracks. But just out of the uh, War Factory comes out a Juggernaut and then just immediately gets destroyed by the Hexapod. So Green Zero right now, with this proxy placement, just didn't work. I mean, he did really good damage destroying all the all separate from structures, but he did not see this Hexapod coming at all. And another uh, Sonic Emitter has been plopped down by Green Zero, and it looks like he's just wanting to um, just hold off uh, Cyberstorm as much as possible with this uh, Hexapod. But uh, he, want, he also plays on the Watchtower, so then he can destroy all the buzzers, so he can get back his um, 
is hu Juggernaut Husk, and he's also playing the Engineers to capture him back, and will he get it? Yes, he will, so that's one Juggernaut back, and this Hexapod is t s slowly getting healed up by the Corruptors, but um, there's also Green Zero's doing his, his very, very best to keep this Hexapod from destroying his entire base, and is also having mining operations here. A second uh, War Factor has been placed down, pr perhaps just to um, get another more Juggernauts out, but he's um, got one Juggernaut remaining, and he is just desperately working on another Sonic Emitter, but another dragon has been placed down. This is just way too close. It's just going to be destroyed immediately. And the uh, Hammerheads should be focusing on the Corruptors so that they do don't um, heal up the Hexapod very quickly. But um, th in the meantime, Greens are lost a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, juggernauts, and this is this is very painful. The uh, Eradicator Hexapod is just now at elite status, and there goes the phase. So now it's just be, now it's just a matter of time of walking over all the um, all the juggernauts, and now Green Zero is just going to be forced to uh, use his hammerheads to destroy the remaining of the corruptors, so that they won't be able to he heal up the hexapod relatively soon. And here comes the plasma missile battery, and that'll take, and that's the end of that. Green Zero is not microing his um, hammerheads. Lost. He lost two of those hammerheads. Three hammerheads! Ooh, he lost three out of the four, so that's not good. And another barracks has been placed down, the Juggernaut's down. Green Zero's going to do his best to micro it away from the Hexapod while it's still phased. And Cyberstorm used, probably used to use this time to get more um, harvest, get more Corruptors on the field. Actually, he hasn't placed down a, he hasn't placed down a single um, Extractor. He's been f uh, f relying on um, uh, long distance mining. Green Zero's both his expansions have running out of Tiberium, and yes, he, he does have three Juggernauts, and that's good. And the phase is finally done now, but the but the um, Red Hexapod may be able to escape. The two Corruptors are healing up the Hexapod. Three Corruptors are healing up the Hexapod, and this is going to be able to. Um, this is good for Cyberstorm because then you can just walk right back into Green Zero's base. And Green Zero uh, has uh, three Juggernauts for defense, four Juggernauts for defense. He's also getting up some Grenadiers to put to put some. And he's also get up getting the uh, grenades, which is a good idea at, at the best. And these uh, Corruptors are coming in, and they're just going to be focusing on the uh, on the Grenadiers. And they don't have the uh, MP yet, so that's not going to be good for Green Zero. And the Stasis field goes down and destroy and gets the Conair, gets two Juggernauts. So Green Zero, that means Green Zero won't be able to place any more Sonic emitters, and that means these Juggernauts are left to their fate. And if uh, Cyberstorm's lucky, this uh, Erratic Exapod will probably go heroic with this last uh, attack by the uh, Juggernaut. Nope, not yet. And this phase is going to last a while. So yeah, there's no there's no way in hell Green Zero is going to last with them. But here come the phase is finally done, and these green these uh, Juggernauts may be the Green Zero's last hope. But here is the heroic Hexapod, destroying so many Juggernauts, and that. And as we all say, if you get a heroic unit to heroic stat, if you get an epic unit to heroic status, it is completely and utterly impossible to beat on a one-on-one -on -one match. No matter if you have this much amp or that much amp, if you have support for the Hexaplot or the Redeemer or the Marv, it is so, so hard to destroy it. Like, it is just super hard to destroy it. And Green Zero is like selling off a bunch of structures to get some money back, hopefully to get all his Juggernaut Husks back and maybe, and hopefully destroy this Hexaplot, but... With the heroic hexapod, <laughs> I don't know what Green Zero can do. I mean, he can use the Emp on his Grenadiers to try to slow it down while his Juggernauts attack the um, Cyberstorm's remaining base. But at the same time, Cyberstorm can just lift off his drone platform and then he can just fly it all, fly it to his uh, hexapod, and then the hexapod can protect it while it just the hexapod destroys everything and all everything remaining at the base. But now uh, selling off the whatever that was, probably probably an extractor, but. Now I think Green Zero just needs to get more economy going because this is the last remaining Tiberium left on the map. That and this one, which is under, under the control of Cyberstorm, and uh, Cyberstorm is actually getting some money back. He's doing, he's getting any money back. But now, with the Heroic Hexapod, with this four Corruptor, he's healing it up. It's just, it's just very, very close. And uh, Green Zero is like selling off all his forces. They jump off from Blipsaw just in the nick of time. And uh, Gre if one Green Zero wants to destroy, he's going to have to use these uh, rockets to to destroy the remaining. Uh, Drone ship. So this looks like a, it's a base racing. Green Zero is bringing in his MCV so that um, just in case if the he Hexapod destroys the remaining uh, base, he won't be able he will be able to um, save his conyard. But now the drone ship is down thanks to those uh, missile squads and the missile squads just go heroic now. They've been destroyed by the uh, buzzer squads and now all those buzzers destroy all the infantry. Oh boy! And Green Zero is just and uh, Cyberstorm is barely hanging on to a few a few structures here while Green Zero is moving his MCV. Closer and closer to the base, but now the uh, Radiator Hexapod is just coming towards the attacking force. And if Green Zero can't finish off Cyberstorm's base, it's just going to be all Cyberstorm with that all with that to heroic with that to heroic Hexapod. There's no way in hell that Green Zero can stop this. So this is all an all-in push. And if Green Zero can do this, then he will be able to 
and he will destroy all of the uh, saps from structures. But now what he needs is he needs a, 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 a tower drop right now because all these uh, scrappers have been followed by these uh, rocket squads, and all those rocket squads have been just destroyed. All those buzzers with those corruptors destroy all those uh, rocket militants, and that is it. Oh boy, the um, drug, the Reddick Exopod is here, and then it'll just take care of those Dragonauts. No question about it. Even Green Zero is placing down a barracks just to hopefully get out um, an engineer to capture these three, four remaining structures from Green Zero, but it looks like that's going to be about it. Green Zero has no production structures left other than this barracks right here, which is about to be destroyed in a few seconds by the um, by the uh, Hexapod. E even that lone Ravenger it just destroys all the engineers that come out of the barracks. So that's it. Green Zero uh, with that attack. It was actually a very close game. Came right down to the wire, and so Green Zero is probably selling, saying his GGs and whatnot. And this is his last structure, so we're going to be it's going to be very soon when the sell-off comes. Actually, that was a nice fight in the center of the map, to be honest. Heroic Radic and Hexapod destroying like what 20 Juggernauts or something. That heroic Hexapod was just unstoppable. As I said, the Juggernauts have a lot of experience and destroy a lot of them. Then that what ha that's what happens. Heroic units. Nice game there. 14 minutes, 24 seconds. Not too shabby for a tower game. So here's your units. There's your structures. Here's your resources, and there's your stats. Alright, I hope you all enjoyed this uh, video commentary by me, Alias Cabal, and I'll see you guys all next time.